Hi everyone, I'm Richard White from Manor Machine, and today we're going to look at some of the lesser known tools within the um, interoperability toolset for Revit 2023. Now, one of these tools um, that's, that's been available within uh, various different versions of this interoperability pack is something called the Model Checker, or Revit Model Checker. And um, it's, it's commonly sort of disregarded by a lot of people as they don't really know what it does or what, what's available to them. Um, but interestingly, there's a, there's a lot of functionality that is available within there out of the box. And um, what I'm going to do is I'll just show you a little bit of understanding around how you might want to leverage this, especially when you're looking at things like quality management and validation of data. So looking at the uh, interoperability tools up here, we have a, a, a tool set up the top, which is uh, labelled Model Checker. If we go into the project setup, um, we can have a look at what is available to us out of the box. So looking at this, um, this check set tool and looking at the database of tools that are available to us, what you'll see down the bottom is a public library of predefined rules that models can be run um, against to check the valid validity of geometrical data or, or, or parameter data within a model. Now, um, th this list is, a, is available as an online list, so you need to make sure that you've got a, you know, a, 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 an internet connection to be able to see this list and then access the, the tools. But assuming that you have that, you should have this full list. Um, in the latest version of 2023, there's been some additional out-of-the-box tool, uh, out-of-the-box validation tools that have been added. Uh, a couple of notable ones is this element fidelity one, um, as well as this class classification manager uniclass validation tool. Um, historically, this Kobe extension validation was also available and it works in conjunction with the Kobe toolkit that's also part of the interoperability tools. So we're just going to have a look at a couple of these just so that you can see what functionality is sit sitting within them. I'm going to start with the Revit 2023 best, best practices tool and, and open up that tool set. So what you can see here is a list of um, rules that the model will be checked against. And a lot of these are just doing you know, standardized quality checking against your model. Um, this can look at everything from, you know, the, the overall file size, the number of warnings that are sitting within your model, um, elements that can be purged from your model, as well as when you go down to this model elements area, we can look at things like duplicate elements, um, mirrored elements, how many work sets are being used on the project. And all of these are predefined um, rules, and we can turn off and turn on these, and then get a, a, a useful uh, report out of the uh, out of the model to do that sort of internal quality management check. So if, what I've done in here in this particular model is I've turned off some of these background tools. Um, I'm also going to turn off some of these MEP and structural ones because I'm only dealing with an architectural model at the moment. And specifically, I'm going to be focusing on um, these model elements where I want to look at duplicate elements within the project. Um, and whether or not it's going to flag up any other errors within within this output. So once we've selected which rules we want to run against the model and get a report from, um, we can then save and close this output. What this will then do is that I have a little think for a second, work out what it's doing, um, and then we can run that against this model. So we can we, essentially we can run this against any view within the model. So there's there's no huge issue there. Um, I normally do this from a 3D view just so that I can access the model a little bit easier. Um, we can also um, add in um, links as well. So if we have a federated model within the Revit environment, we can then have a look at all of the different models in conjunction with one another and maybe pull a, a full federated model report from this environment too. I only have one model open and it's, this happens to be the architectural model. So we're just looking at this one that, that's listed just here. Um, we're going to run this report now, um, and what it will do is it will run through all of those, um, those those rule sets against the entire model that it can see there. Um, it's now flagging up that I, uh, I've got a couple of failures in here, so um, I've got some, some elements that need to be reviewed. Um, as I go down into this model elements area, we can see that I have some duplicate elements that are listed, and surprisingly a lot of uh, mirrored elements within the project which may or may not be a, a problem with regard to the, um, the the counts for those objects I'm more I'm more concerned about duplicate elements so that if I send this to a quantity surveyor to do um, element counts on 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 the building for ordering of parts or ordering of materials I want to make sure that the numbers are there or thereabouts or are about right so within here we can go to the drop down and we can see that I've got an, uh, I've got six duplicate elements. So I happen to have the um, a couple of these uh, furniture elements duplicated within the model. We can then have a look at where these exist within the model. 
so we can actually see um, maybe a maybe a slightly better view uh, if we can pull across here. So this is pulling. I can see that this uh, this um, set of furniture in here is duplicate. Um, I might also see where where else have I got uh, that sofa. I've got a duplicate version of this sofa, and pulling this cross here, I've got a duplicate version of this bath. So what I can do from that point is I can go. Okay, well now I've got those duplicates in there. I can uh, I can push out a report if I wanted to. So I can push this this uh, model report out and maybe give it to uh, the architectural technologist who's dealing with this project or the architect who you know who's overseeing the project and say you've got a number of issues with this project that you need to go and um, go and fix. Um, and then we can rerun that report afterwards. So I'll go in here. I'll I'll uh, I'll close this out for the time being. I'm going to have a look and see, okay, I'm going to delete that element. Yeah, clearly I've got an extra bath in there. Um, I'm going to delete that that extra sofa, but I'm going to leave this one over here as still valid. Um, I'm then going to rerun that report. So I can now run this again, check all my duplicate elements that sit within here. Um, and what I should now find is that some of those have now disappeared. Um, I can go down to here, and I know that I still had that duplicate um, uh, element down here, and, and, and it's still being flagged. So we can push this out to um, an HTML report, uh, which will allow that, that sort of um, that, that sort of point in the sand to say that's what we've got at this point from a quality management perspective. Um, and obviously, this report will be the fully collated report of all of the rules that you run for that particular output. We can also push this to an Excel-based um, spreadsheet should we want to, you know, flag and review that, um, and then maybe push the, you know, a, a report back through the Excel environment to say, yeah, we've dealt with that. And now you can rerun your report, um, which uh, which will then um, support your your quality assurance processes um, and your validation against things like ISO 9001 and and ISO um, 19650 should you need to meet particular requirements against your BIM execution plan. So it's a really, really powerful tool. Um, I often use this tool in conjunction with doing checks against the, the Kobe toolkit to make sure that the parameters that I've added into Kobe have been you know, fully filled out and I've got no blanks within there, or against my classification manager. So if I'm having to include things like uniclass classifications into a model, then those are also being categorized correctly, that every object has got a uniclass classification associated to it and the fields aren't blank. Um, so you, you can run these really, really quickly and pull off those reports very, very, um, in, in, you know, very fast and, and co collate that report um, as a log of, uh, of the, your progression through the model. Should you um, require any further information around things like the BIM interoperability toolkits, COBE, IFC validation, all those kind of things, then please get in touch with Man and Machine and we'll do our best to help you. Thanks.